Hi, this is Rabbi Dove Fisher of the Young Israel of Orange County. Um, share with me your likes and your dislikes. We can handle it. There were six miracles by which God brought about the victory of Donald Trump and the defeat of Kamala Harris. Now, by a miracle, what we're talking about is something that doesn't make sense in the natural order of things. We're not going into the politics of whether we like Trump or we don't like Harris. Uh, my views are well known by those who look me up elsewhere. But what we're talking about is things that happened in front of our very eyes that cannot be explained by natural causes. And we see the hand of providence, in this case, having saved America and Israel, or certainly helped protect America and Israel. One, it is a miracle that Biden collapsed during that debate. It's a miracle. Yes, he was losing his, his stuff. We all knew he shouldn't even have been running in 2020. He was, he was not only past his prime, but we already knew he he had substantial uh, mental issues, that he was losing whatever he once had. But a lot of people denied it, including Harris and the media, and he just denied it in front of the United States national audience. He broke down and collapsed in that 13th minute. That was a miracle. He didn't do it all night long. He was slow, and we can debate whether he was good in the debate. But that temporary brief breakdown that led the Democrats to panic was clearly the hand of God. It could have been natural, too. But when we look at the overall picture, we see something extraordinary. Number two, four years earlier, he had to pick a vice president. He had a wonderful choice of options if you're a Democrat. There were some excellent candidates, no question about it. If he specifically wanted a woman, he could have picked Amy Klobuchar. If he specifically wanted someone of a different orientation, or he could have picked Cory Booker. He picked the single, and I'm not getting into my personal politics, he picked the single least qualified, least impressive, least intelligent person to be his vice president. She was the only one, Harris was the only one, basically, who couldn't even make it to opening night at the Iowa caucuses. She dropped, she dropped out before Iowa. She never received a single vote, notwithstanding that she began with an extraordinary public relations campaign. The media were in her pocket, a black woman who's going to be president of the United States. So exciting shit. Trump-like audiences at the beginning in her first two, three rallies, and she fizzled like a dud, like, like a balloon at a birthday party that got pricked by a needle. And nevertheless, of all the possible names to put up as vice president, it's a miracle that he picked her. Yes, he had his DEI reasons, DEI standing, of course, not only for diversity, uh, uh, equity, and inclusiveness, but also for did, didn't earn it. He had his DEI reasons, a black woman, of course. But the idea that he picked that particular black woman from all his choices, the least intelligent, and again, I'm not getting into politics or campaigning now. It's objective. She couldn't answer questions. She wouldn't hold press conferences. She, her word salads, we know what we're talking about. It was God's miracle that four years later, yes, God plans in advance. That four years later, when the moment of truth would come, after Biden's abdication, basically, that the, maybe the only candidate in the Democrat Party unable to beat Trump would be the one against Trump. Trump is very deeply hated, resented. Many Republicans never Trump, and many people who would sit on the fence just don't like Trump. And he does have those aspects of his personality and character that are highly objectionable. The one person so weak as an opponent that Trump would be able to trounce 
That's miracle number two that Biden selected her. Number three, it is a miracle that when the Democrats pushed Biden out, forced him to abdicate, that they went with that weak vice president rather than having a abbreviated campaign season, a quick primary, and allow some of their really strong people to come forth as potential alternative candidates. That's some really good people. Mark Kelly, the senator from Arizona, former astronaut, he's very popular, he's very smart, he's very capable. Roy Cooper, former governor of North Carolina, the same story, able to win in a sort of Southern reddish state, purple, reddish, very strong. They had, um, you could say Joe Manchin, who had just announced he no longer would be running for uh, re-election as senator from West Virginia. He went independent. Then they asked him, if your name were to come up to be a presidential candidate, would you do it? And he said, yeah, for that, I would do it. I'd go to be Democrat again. They skipped over Manchin. They skipped over Mark Warner, a very strong senator uh, from Virginia, a really smart, intelligent, capable guy that could unite the country. It is a miracle that with so many competent, qualified candidates, who all of whom not only could have beaten Trump, but would have beaten Trump, they selected the one guaranteed to lose. That's miracle three. I'm not even getting to get into politics because I'm saying some nice things about Democrats and I'm saying some things that are not so nice about Trump. But I'm talking about things that we live through they just seem all reasonable. And there are going to be articles the next day in real clear politics showing why it all makes sense. These are miracles. Number four, that Trump turned his head when, when that animal shot him. When the assassin shot him, the idea that Trump turned his head at that moment to the poster that listed the immigration numbers, illegal immigration. And so his life was spared. It's a miracle unto itself, it's good luck. These things happen. He got a break. That's one way to look at it. And in and of itself, you could say that. But when you start putting all these different pieces together, Biden's collapse, his mistaken naming of, of uh, Harris to be his vice president, the idea of pushing Harris to become the new, the new candidate, Trump being shut at so there's your four miracles right there. Number five, everyone in the world knew way in advance that the 2024 election would be decided by Pennsylvania. Sure, there are 50 states and everyone's voting, but a great many of those states are either going to come out blue or red, no matter what you do. No matter how well Trump would do in New York and New Jersey, that was going to Harris. No matter how well she would do in Alabama and Mississippi, that was going to Trump. There were the several ba seven battleground states, and Pennsylvania was critical because as Pennsylvania went, yes, Ohio was going to go Republican anyway, but Pennsylvania is also a bellwether these days for what might happen in Michigan, what might happen in Wisconsin. That's sort of what they used to call the Rust Belt or the Blue Wall of middle Americans who work on the, in the assembly lines, union workers, regular Americans, Black, white, Hispanic, educated, not educated. It's a good kind of middle of the road place. Everyone knew it would come down to Pennsylvania, and it did. Sure, it took the other states. Sure, they had to wait for Wisconsin to come in. Later, Michigan. But it was Pennsylvania. And she had an incredible opportunity to name Josh Shapiro, the very popular governor of Pennsylvania, as her vice presidential nominee. It made every sense. She only lost Pennsylvania by two, three points. He easily would have made up the difference, brought that in. That's why you name vice presidents, at least to help you with your own state, with their own state. And he's very popular. And he's very, he's just very competent politician. But what happened? She named Tim Walls. And I'm not going to get into commentary on Tim Walls. But she already, everyone knew she was going to win Minnesota. She didn't need Tim Walls to Minnesota. Whether Tim Walls, furthermore, 
hurt her campaign because of things he did and said, and I'm not going to get into that. It is a miracle she named Josh Shapiro, that she named Tim Walls over Josh Shapiro. All these were parts and pieces necessary for this extraordinary election result. Uh, there's more. There's a sixth miracle, and I'll leave that for you to figure out. But the hand of God was all over this election. The finger of God, it's one finger. We're talking about a hand, five fingers. There were miracles upon miracles. We just don't typically see them that way. We just see them as luck, chance. These were miracles. By God's grace, Trump will be the next president. By God's grace, Harris will not. May God protect us and protect both the United States of America, the people of America. He has protected Israel and the Jewish people. And uh, may God watch over Trump and direct him at moments that he's not in such a good mood, that he makes the right decisions and, and sticks with his inner better part. May God watch over him too. Thank you very much.